I've been asked to explain a little bit about how best to create a blessed object or an energetic object. This is a little bit tricky. It is not merely about uh, following the right formula. You cannot just say I have this cookbook here with these ingredients this much time and this will create a blessed object. Um, creating a good blessing is very much an art, just like healing is. So it does require knowledge, it does require skill, but it also requires some experience and some sensitivity. What happens during the, the charging or the blessing of an object is that you want a power to be able to reside in this object. So the embodiment should be as close to perfect as possible and also the ability of the energy to come into it should be as good as possible. So that is very similar in a way to giving a person an initiation. So the object itself should be as pure as possible. So that won't attract the wrong energies from the cosmos. So before any blessing is done, before you charge the object, the object itself should be purified. Uh, this can be done by, for instance, white light. You can use water, you can use fire. Um, these are all, uh, you can also put it in the earth, for instance. These are all methods of purifying the object before you start the blessing. Certain energies tend to be inherent in the object, namely the, both the energies of the material it was made of and of the creator. So especially if an object is made of previously living material like wood or bone or skin, um, then what the animal was like, what the animal did, what energies in the way the, an the animal or the plant built up during its lifetime um, will also determine the base state of the, of the object and it will also attract a similar energy. So if you're making an object using an, a natural material, you have to be very selective about what material to use you really have to find a material which has the right attraction to it, which has enough purity in it. If the animal itself has suffered a lot, has had a lot of pain or anger or anguish, then also similar energies will be attracted to the object and the object will turn quite dark rather than light. The same goes for the person who created the object. In sculpting something, the creator's energy also goes into what is being made. Um, in a way, the creator imprints their own energy on their creation. So uh, certain things are relatively dead because they've just been manufactured by machines. So there is hardly any energetic imprint. Uh, generally, though, the energy in factories or in, yeah, uh, these conveyor belt, high-speed factories. The people who do work there, who are there, are usually not in the highest vibration. They're also usually not the happiest people possible. So personally, I tend to prefer handcrafted objects because uh, on the one hand, you have the risk that the energy in them will be bad, but there will be more energy there to begin with. So there will be a much stronger attraction to other powers from the cosmos to the object rather than no attraction whatsoever because yeah just as a piece of plastic or a machine doesn't attract a lot of blessings or spiritual guidance similarly the object won't attract blessings or spiritual guidance so handcrafted objects really have my preference but the crafter has to be in a good state, has to be a good artist, has to be devoted to their work, has to be in a way a happy artist, uh, enjoying their work because if they're not in a good state, their work also won't be having a very nice, good energy. So once 
the object is more or less okay, and then it becomes about the environment and the person performing the blessings. Similarly, they have to be as pure as possible, as good as possible, as well attuned as possible. Um, it often helps if you do blessings or in the same in the same place, so that in the place where you perform the blessing, there is already a very open connection to the the higher parts of the cosmos. So these energies can come down more easily and bless the object than if you would do it somewhere else or somewhere new. So if the question is should you do a ritual or should you merely do an invocation, um, it is a question of time. A ritual is better because you allow the charge to build up over time, you allow it to stabilize itself and in creating a ritual space you're also purifying both the object, yourself, all other participants, the area. So it is a very nice operating theater for creating such an object if you can afford the time and effort and money to set up a ritual. An invocation can be enough if indeed the quality of the object is good enough and also if your own connection or the connection of the invoker is strong enough to do such a thing. So for instance if you have a priest or a priestess who has a very strong connection with the divinity and the divinity's presence is very much there through their body then a mere invocation will do because that presence will just push out all undesired energies and claim the object as their own. So if a person is really a blessed priest or a blessed priestess, then an invocation will be enough. Um, but if the person themselves is not recognized by these powers as being a priest or a priestess, then you can invoke all you want. It will not work. Then you really will have to build up a ritual to invite those powers because you do not have the position yourself to perform a successful invocation. I hope this helps a little bit on uh, how to bless an object, how to do it properly.